This lecture is going to go over intermolecular forces. Now, before you watch this lecture, you want to make sure that you have gotten through the polarity lecture with learning about dipoles because you're going to need that information to be able to do this. So you'll want to have a periodic table and you'll also want to have completed your Pogel packet that has intermolecular forces on it. What, or Go through that before you watch this lecture and then it'll kind of help clarify any of the things that I go through in the lecture here. All right, so intermolecular forces. These are gonna be forces that are between different molecules. So the key here being between different molecules, not within one molecule. So when we did the lecture on polarity, we were looking at the forces between two elements in a single molecule. Like when we looked at something like CH4, and we had these H's all the way around. And we looked at the polarity pointing towards our carbon. That would be an intramolecular force because that is a force that's within one molecule. But these are forces between two different molecules and how they are going to interact. So the there, we're going to go over three different intermolecular forces. They are ordered in this from strongest to weakest. So I don't have that written down anywhere. You do want to make sure that you have that noted. So number one is hydrogen bonding. So it is the strongest bond that we're going to see. So this is when we have a positive hydrogen that's attracted to a negative end of another molecule. So we have a hydrogen. And if you think about looking at a dipole, your positive end is always going to point towards hydrogen. So that means that hydrogen kind of has a, has a slightly positive charge. And then you're going to have a negative end of another molecule. Now that negative end would be something that would be more electronegative in whatever bond it is. And that part of that molecule is going to be slightly negative. So what happens is the slightly positive hydrogen of molecule A is attracted to the slightly negative end of molecule B. We are going to do some examples, but if you remember, positive and negative are going to attract, that's going to help you with this. So, like I said, this is the strongest of the intermolecular forces. So anytime you see IMF, that's intermolecular forces, just kind of shortens everything up for us. Hydrogen, in order to have a hydrogen bond, it must be bonded to a phone. What does that mean? So it's a fluorine, an oxygen, or a nitrogen. Your hydrogen must be bonded to one of these three in order to have a hydrogen bond. If your hydrogen is bonded to a carbon, it's not a hydrogen bond. If your hydrogen is bonded to a sulfur, not a hydrogen bond. So you have to have a phone. So the second type of intermolecular force, this is the second strongest, is a dipole-dipole. So this is when the negative end of one molecule is attracted to the positive end of another. You're probably thinking, isn't that what you just said about hydrogen bonding? Yes, except this does not have to include a hydrogen. So a hydrogen bond is an example of a dipole-dipole, but it's a specific type of dipole-dipole. So this type of bond is going to include anything that has a negative end and a positive end on another molecule when they are attracted to one another. And the last one we have is London dispersion. So going in order, this is the weakest of all of our intermolecular forces. So something that you have to remember is that electrons are always in motion in their orbitals. And it's essentially a random process. So there are going to be times where negative electron or these negative electrons are going to all kind of end up in the same spot, making that region or that spot slightly more negative. And then a spot that doesn't have a lot of electrons would have a slightly more positive charge. So it's similar to a dipole-dipole, except that this attraction is only going to occur by chance. So it just happens that there's some negative, a lot of negative electrons in one spot and not very many in another. It's not something that's always happening. Like the carbon hydrogen bond is always going to be more negative towards your carbon over your hydrogen. 
So this does occur in all forces, whether there's a hydrogen bond, a dipole, dipole or not, you're always going to see London dispersion forces. And the reason for this is, is because all of these molecules do have electrons and all of those electrons are going to be continuously moving. So anything that is nonpolar can still have, will have London dispersion. It will not have a dipole-dipole, it will not have a hydrogen bond, but you will see London dispersion forces because of those electrons moving in something that is nonpolar. So I know that the London dispersion can kind of be a little bit confusing to think of or to think about, so I'm going to draw an example here for you. So we have our positive nucleus in right here. This is of molecule A, and then we'll do molecule B down here. Molecule B also has a nucleus. Now, what we normally think of is our electrons doing stuff like this, right? But we know that that's really not what happens, okay? So I'm going to erase this. Now, remember our electrons, they reside in those orbitals. So they could be in the S, they might be in the P, they could be in the D. They have a large range of where they are. But what can happen is our electrons could kind of like by chance, all be on this side of this atom. And then maybe there's a few over here. So what we see is a slightly negative, do you remember this sign? Side on this side, where this side is slightly positive because of the amount of electrons in each location. So then we look at B where maybe all of our electrons are over here on this side. And there's just a few out here and here. So what we're gonna see here is a slightly positive region here and a negative region here. So what we're gonna see happen is this is going to be attracted to this. So it's gonna look something like this isn't really a dipole, but I'm just showing it so you think of it in the same way, that this area is positive and this area is negative, so they are going to be attracted to one another. So what's going to happen is you are going to see this, this guy moving closer to here. So I know everything just kind of overlapped on that, but... So he moves closer because they are now attracted to one another. So that's London dispersion. And then in any given second, we're going to see these electrons over here. They might now be spread out evenly. So this force is no longer going to be occurring. And then we're going to see this guy moving back over to here. Okay? So it all just depends on where those electrons are in each moment. All right, so the intermolecular forces and physical properties. So what we're going to see here is different properties that happen within different substances. And how do their intermolecular forces affect those properties? So the first one is the heat of fusion. This is the heat that is required to melt a solid. The next thing we have is heat of vaporization. So the heat that is required to vaporize a liquid, so go from a liquid to a solid. Heat of fusion is going from a solid to a liquid. And what happens is the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the heat of fusion and the higher heat of vaporization. So it means that it's going to take a much longer time for it to melt it's going to take a much longer heat for it to boil. So we have a, a higher melting and boiling point. 
So if you're looking at two different situations, one has hydrogen bonding, one has a dipole-dipole, your situation with hydrogen bonding is going to have a higher boiling point and a higher melting point than the dipole-dipole. All right, so let's do some examples here. I'm going to pause this. What I want you to do is I want you to draw the Lewis structures of both of these compounds. Pause it, come back, check your Lewis structures because you're never going to get too much practice with drawing your Lewis structures. Okay, once you've drawn your Lewis structures, you should also note that it does not matter if your double bond on this is here or here or here. Remember that is resonance. So I could very easily have my double bond be on any of these oxygens. So if you have that, do not think that yours is wrong. You just drew a different resonance structure. Once you have completed your correct Lewis structures, go ahead, pause it again. I want you to draw your dipoles. Okay, so you should have your dipoles pointing towards your oxygens. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So what we end up with is a negative region here, a negative region here, and a negative region here by the oxygens. And this carbon, and it's, I put this arrow in a bad spot to show this. This carbon here in the middle is actually going to have a slightly positive charge. And we're going to see the same thing here. Negative, 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 and then our carbon is slightly positive. So remember these def different definitions. We have hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, London dispersion. Do we have a hydrogen bond here? No. Why? Simply because we don't have a hydrogen. Okay, so we can move on. Now, do we have a dipole dipole. So a dipole dipole, remember, is when you're going to have two polar molecules that are attracted. Well, this one's polar. This first one here. This is polar. This is also polar. So what's going to happen is this negative is going to be attracted to this positive. Okay? So what we're going to see is this is actually just going to move into here and be attracted to that, okay? So we're going to see an attraction from – no, hold on. That didn't work how I wanted it to. This whole piece is going to slide over, okay? So this oxygen right here is going to – slide over and be attracted to this carbon. So this is an example of a dipole-dipole. Okay, moving on. So what I want you to do with this, pause it, draw your Lewis structures, also draw your dipole lines, and when you're done, come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, so here's your Lewis structures with your dipole arrows. So everything should be pointing to your oxygen. Your oxygen is more electronegative than your hydrogens. So when we're looking at our, um, our list of intermolecular forces, we start off with hydrogen bonds. Does this have hydrogen? Yes. So that's a good start. Are the hydrogens attached to a phone? Remember, it has to be attached to a fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen. Hydrogen attached to an oxygen, hydrogens are attached to an oxygen, yes. So what we have here is hydrogen bonding. So I just want to show you kind of what's happening. So these hydrogens are going to be positive, 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 and these oxygens are going to be negative. One, because of the lone pairs and because the oxygen is more electronegative and using those electrons more than the hydrogen. So what you're going to see is this hydrogen here is attracted to this negative oxygen. And then what really happens is then we have another oxygen down here. 
and then this this one right here would be attracted to this one. There could be another oxygen here which would attract both of these. That is why water is very unique, okay? This is just one of the reasons, is because of these very strong hydrogen bonds. So this is an example of a hydrogen bond. All right, moving on to our last one, CH4 and H2O. Go ahead, pause it, draw your Lewis structures, draw your dipoles. All right, so here's our dipoles on this. So going through our list, we start with hydrogen bonds. Oh look, I have hydrogens here and I have hydrogens here. Awesome. The hydrogens on my water are attracted to, are attached or bonded to an oxygen, which is good because they need to be bonded to a phone. But my hydrogens on this CH4 are not, so we have to rule out hydrogen bonding because they hydrogens on here are bonded to a carbon, which is not one of our options. All right, dipole-dipole is two polar molecules. Water's polar, okay? These lone pairs make it polar, and then this direction of these dipoles make it polar. So this is polar. But look at our CH4. We have this guy cancels with this one. This one cancels with this one. So we have something that is non polar, which means we have to rule out dipole dipole because a dipole dipole is an attraction between two polar molecules. So that leaves us with one thing that leaves us with London dispersion. So the strongest that you are going to see between these two is going to be a London dispersion force. We're not going to see a hydrogen bond. We're not going to see a dipole dipole. Okay. So when you are answering questions based on these, you're going to want to look at, you're going to want to answer it by what is the strongest force. So always start with hydrogen bonds. Rule that out first. If there's no hydrogen bonds, is it dipole dipole? If it's not dipole dipole, is it London dispersion? But one, one little trick, gonna, not really a trick, going to make things shorter. Check to see if things are polar first. If you have anything that's nonpolar, you're going to default to that London dispersion. So you're going to save yourself just some time of going through all the rest of them there. All right. So go ahead, finish out your worksheets. Make sure you do work through that Pogel worksheet. It's going to kind of help you understand, especially with the London dispersion, what's really going on.